from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of VMworld 2020, brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman. This is theCUBE's 11th year of VMworld. Here we are in 2020, of course, rather than being together at the Moscone or at the Sand, we're coming to you in your uh, place of work or home where you're watching video. Uh, happy to welcome back. We have two of our longtime guests on the program. First, we have Travis V. Hill. He is the Senior Vice President of Product Management with Dell Technologies. And joining him is Lee Caswell, who's the Vice President of Products, Storage, and Availability Business Unit at VMware. Lee and Travis, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. You it's good us. to see you again. All right, so we, we, we love kind of the maturation of what's happened. You know, I mentioned 11 years. Uh, I, I get to usually, you know, sit down and talk with both of you. We talk about strategy. We talk about how customers, and at the end of the day, we know, you know, things are changing. Heck, 2020, things are changing more uh, every day. Uh, but one of the big transitions here is talking about that, how applications are changing. In the old days, it was, hey, I have an application. Let me just stick it in a VM, and it's going to be good there forever. We know that today, I, I need to be able to react fast, I need to move things forward, and that impacts what VMware and Dell are doing together. So may, Lee, if maybe we come with you, uh, give, give the VMware perspective on you know, that, that application changing and, and what that means uh, to there, and you know, Travis, feel free to chime in when, when Lee's done. Sure. Yeah, thanks so much, Stu, and uh, great to have, uh, to be back here on theCUBE. Uh, and VMworld is always a great opportunity to talk about how the industry is changing, what's, what's really uh, happening here. And so one of the things that we're all finding is that the pace of application change is speeding up. And you know what, you know, when you think about infrastructure, you want to think about how you can organize around the fastest changing element. This is one of the things we kicked off with Project Pacific and our Tanzu portfolio a year ago. And you're starting to see all the products come roaring through right now as we're integrating Kubernetes so that container-based applications can be managed, secured, protected, just the same way with all the same tools that we have with our traditional VM applications. Yeah, you know, Lee, it's, 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 a, uh, it's an excellent point. I mean, we are seeing the adoption of the modern applications um, in VMware environments just accelerate beyond belief. And we're getting increasing uh, requests from our customers to protect, uh, to manage um, production workloads in Kubernetes environments. And uh, with our Power Protect Data Manager, yeah, we're actually uh, announcing that we have full support for the Tanzu portfolio. So that includes TKG, TKGI, uh, Kubernetes clusters, Kubernetes clusters in vSphere. Um, so, we're, we're really excited to be able to offer this capability to our joint customers. And, um, you know, I think one thing that we're seeing is that, that the roles in IT, you know, are, are oftentimes uh, blending together. So one of the things we're excited about with our solution is that with our direct data protection integration in vSphere environments, it's actually the V admin that can provision, monitor, manage, and protect the Kubernetes workloads give uh, you know, a unified experience and provide that, that peace of mind uh, in, uh, in this next generation world. Yeah, Travis, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought up some of those changing roles. I mean, that was such a big theme for so many years is the virtualization admin taking on more responsibility. Um, when Lee teed up the changing applications, you, you've got other roles coming together. You've got the application development team, uh, which oftentimes is disconnected uh, from, from the infrastructure team. Uh, so for, from either of you, just, you know, what are you seeing from your customers? How are they sorting through that? You know, I need to move agile, I need to move faster. Um, and that's not traditionally how, how, how the infrastructure team is, has worked. Yeah, it's a good yeah, point. I, you know, one of the things that uh, we've been working on, for example, is how we've integrated SRM with VVols and, and PowerMax. And when you think about that, uh, you know, and we've talked for years, right, about uh, VVols, for example, what we're responding to now is that customers are coming back and saying, listen, I, I have HCI, but I also have storage system and I need your help to go and be able to manage these with a consistent operating model and the same team. And that career path for the virtualization administrator just continues to grow. You know, they're adding now 
cloud native applications, Kubernetes orchestrated applications, and being able to manage those across traditional storage and newer HCI systems. This is a really interesting blend of where the companies are working together to make sure that customer responses are being addressed really quickly. Yeah, it's it's a great uh, a great example, Lee. I mean, if you think about um, you know three tier architectures and PowerMax being the flagship of the heart of a lot of you know data centers that have been op, you know in operation for for decades, the fact that we're we're seeing from our customers, hey, can you take uh, SRM and VVOLs? Can you integrate it with PowerMax and SRDF and be able to provide me a step along the way on my modernization journey such that I can utilize what I've built up my IT operations about around over, you know, over the last couple of decades, along with the newer deployment models like hyperconverged infrastructure? And we're seeing that kind of that kind of, you know, that that uh, step forward um, and and a blurring of the lines in terms of roles all all over the place. I think another good example, Lee, is uh, uh, cloud native app dev, right? And customers looking for object uh, S3 object storage capability uh, to provide a simple DevOps friendly way of uh, you know, developing applications and hybrid cloud environments. And that's why we're really happy that we're able to uh, provide early access for what we refer to as object scale, which works in conjunction with vSAN data persistence platform to allow our customers to deliver modern applications, but at the same time, use infrastructure that the IT organization is deploying you know, for, for other standard applications. I think that's another good example. That's a good well, point. You know, we had blocks through vSAN, of course, right? And added files. Uh, and what was missing? Well, objects. <laughs> and so exactly. by partnering together with this persistent storage platform, we've got a way to go and basically supply an object scale or, you know, object scale storage that can be used for cloud native development. And I think this is a good example, right? This isn't just, you know, one hand clapping, right? This is both companies working together to make sure that customers have a seamless experience. And that's really important. It doesn't come for granted, right? I mean, it really takes co-engineering, joint testing, and developing and go to market together between our companies. I've never seen it working better. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I, yeah, no, Travis, I, I was just, uh, you know, saying, you know, it, we, we saw how fast VMware went from announcing Project Pacific to, you know, the GA uh, of the base solution uh, it, where you needed the Cloud Foundation uh, to, you know, update one already, allowing everything to move open. That's going to be a little bit challenging to keep up with that pace of innovation. You know, we've been talking for years on the cube. But, you know, we went from the 18-month release cycle to now most things are like a six-week release cycle. Um, so, you know, give us through. You know, any other pieces of the portfolio we need to understand uh, fitting in with, with Tanzu and yeah, how, how do you move things along? And where are the customers with their adoption? Are they sitting there waiting for it, or is this something that is going to be a more traditional enterprise, uh, you know, slow roll? <laughs> no, I think you, I think you hit it spot on, Stu. The the adoption and the deployments of these these new uh, architectures are are coming very very quickly, right? Traditional IT is is you know trying to 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 and, and in, in many cases successfully moving to a more cloud-like delivery uh, CI/CD approach to how they run their their shops and the you know the speed of innovation and the speed and the the dynamics of of new technologies within the data centers are just you know accelerating uh, you know at, at a, a really fast pace. Um, and in order to, you know, continue to keep up with these changes, it's, you know, I'll reflect back on a little bit on what, what Lee was talking about. It's understanding where customers are going and jointly working together to target those pain points. And I'll, I'll give, you know, a very specific example. And then I think maybe Lee, we, sh we should start to talk a little bit about Monterey as well. But, you know, I'll say a very specific example, example on, on joint innovation is, um, you know, as customers have deployed uh, VMware more broadly, and they put more mission critical, large applications on VM, 
there's been sort of this persistent issue that some of those VMs just were so large or required such high availability that they were, you know, what some IT uh, professionals would refer to as un, uh, as as unproductive, unprotectable. And so we were actually demonstrating with VMware innovation that allows uh, those uh, those VMs, those large mission critical VMs that can take zero, you know, downtime in, in, or even a pause in in availability or performance, the ability to uh, to take backups without impacting the performance on those on those VMs. So that's a very specific thing we're doing, a very specific pain point. Um, but I think it's an, ex an example of us working together to to target customer uh, customer needs. And then I think more broadly, there's a big tre a trend in composability that Pat talked a little bit about this morning. Uh, Project Monterey. I'll let Lee kick it off and then kind of talk a little bit about what we're doing to. Uh, to uh, partner with VMware on this uh, on this initiative. Yeah, well, great. I definitely want to hear Monterey. Uh, obviously, edge computing has everybody excited. You know, Travis, we've been hearing from the Dell team the last couple of years as, as that strategy is maturing. Some of the investment pieces that Dell's doing. So, Lee, you know, we hear edge computing. What does that mean? You, you know, VMware's got a strong telco play uh, that we've watched. Uh, you know, for for, for, for many years. Um, so, you know, just as you said, Project Pacific rolled out pretty fast. Uh, help us understand a bit more this Monterey and how fast will, will, will this turn into that, that cascade of products that you talked about uh, for, 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 that we saw the last year. Yeah, thanks. And it's exciting at VMware, right? We're, we're willing to go and share projects and, you know, over time projects become products. It's the way it works. And so the project is really a directional vision that says, if you think about what we did with Project Pacific a year ago, and Pacific being like going broad, the idea was applications are changing. We needed to go and basically make Kubernetes integrated with vSphere with our full VMware Cloud Foundation, and then basically simplify it for customer consumption. And we did that together with the Tanzu brand. Now, Project Monterey, if you think of the Monterey Canyon, is now going deep. And what it says is that not only the software architecture has to change, but also hardware, new hardware capabilities particularly through the use of smart mix, are a new way for us to think about re-architecting how compute is basically optimized within a server and then across clusters and even across the hybrid cloud. And so Monterey will be a new way to look at how we go and efficiently offload CPUs and use these new smart NIC offload engines as a way to think about where hypervisors run, where smart, you know, let's call it software defined, um, whether it's storage or compute, and most importantly, probably is security. Because one of the things we're finding that applications, new applications are demanding is encryption, for example, or distributed firewalls, thinking about like, how do we do that secure boot? Or how do we think about air gapping applications from the infrastructure? And so we're really thinking about how to re-architect the world of security. So the security is integrally distributed throughout an architecture. And so you'll be seeing with Project Monterey, our ability to go and drive new products out of that. And we're working very closely on an engineering to engineering level with Dell Technologies to make sure this new technology becomes available for customers and fully integrated in the VMware Cloud Foundation so we have an easy way for customers to digest it, which I, I think that's the thing, Stu, right now is there's a lot of new technologies coming so fast, really the partnership means that we're able to consume those more quickly. Wonderful, yeah, Monterey. So uh, we're going to go deeper than the Grand Canyon is deep, but uh, I, I guess we need to all, uh, you know, uh, breathe underwater too. So, Tra Travis, uh, as I mentioned, you know, Dell's had for a couple of years some of these analyst sessions uh, that I've had the opportunity to go through. Uh, been watching out that 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 growth of the the edge strategy. Uh, obviously, yeah. you know, Dell, Dell has everything from some of the hardened pieces uh, on, on the consumer side uh, through tying into, you know, broad ecosystems. So software obviously is going to be a huge component uh, of, uh, of what Edge is. Uh, we saw on the keynote stage, NVIDIA, uh, you know, a big partnership there, obviously a huge important partner for, for both uh, Dell and uh, VMware. So Travis, from the Dell side, what, is, what does this vision of Monterey mean? 
It's, you know, it's uh, extremely important, you know, I'd say transformational potentially uh, for IT going forward. And Lee did a really good job of describing the trends, whether that be cloud native, telco, 5G, uh, you know, machine learning and data centric applications, multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, and that security concern that, that Lee was talking about. Those are those are our real trends. And if we can offer infrastructure that is more composable into these these disaggregated resources, uh, you know, across the edge, across the cloud, um, across the core, um, all software defined and seamlessly managed. I mean, that's a powerful, powerful vision. And we're just really excited to be partnering with VMware jointly engineering this future, focusing first on those smart NICs that, that Lee was talking about, because you need that higher compute, you need that increased bandwidth, you need easier manageability of a distributed infrastructure, and you need that ability to provide easier and more distributed security. Um, so uh, lots more to come. Uh, we will be incorporating um, the, these technologies specifically in the form of smart NICs into our HCI and our server portfolio. Um, but this, like Lee said, this is a trend that will move from initiative to project to products very quickly. Wonderful. Well, boy, we, we covered uh, that, that breadth and that depth, as you said, Lee. Want to give you both uh, just final takeaways, what you want people to take. Uh, from VMworld 2020. Lee, we'll start with you, and then Travis, you get the final word. Yeah, you know, we're really looking at a changing world in terms of applications. And so for customers, you know, around the globe, uh, you know, look for the partnerships that will bring those new capabilities and make it easy to go and deploy as fast as possible. You know, we started off making sure that people weren't looking down at the infrastructure and started looking up at the apps. Uh, we're continuing that process with what we're doing around Tanzu around our Kubernetes portfolio. And you know, stay tuned, there'll be more to come, much more as we work together on Project Monterey. Lots of exciting news and uh, you know, glad that you were here for VM World to go and see it all come to, come to light. Yeah, I think, you know, I obviously agree with, with, with everything that, that, that Lee just said. You know, I think, think for me, um, the, uh, this VM World, is just you know another step forward in a great partnership across Dell Technologies and VMware. Um, and you know I mentioned several things, you know uh, all of the things that we're doing together. Um, you know I, I, I forgot to mention actually that we're we're the first company to be uh, to offer a certified solution uh, uh, to protect VMware Cloud Foundations, which I used that specific example again. You know, expect more first, uh, expect more joint in, in engineering and integrations. And, you know, I think the power of these, uh, of these two organizations coming together is what's going to be needed to help drive forward into this next generation of modern applications and, and dynamic workloads and, and disaggregated resources. Um, and so we're just really excited about um, the innovation, uh, the ability to address customer issues and the, uh, the, you know, and the strong partnership that we have across Dell Technologies and VMware. Well, one of the measurement sticks that we have today is how fast everyone can, can respond and move fast. Uh, congratulations on all the progress you've both made in your teams in the last year. And absolutely uh, look forward to hearing more about Project Monterey as that uh, as that matures. Travis and Lee, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, Stu. All right, and stay tuned for more coverage of VMworld 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.